Hi everyone, so I'm going to go through the um, four application questions from yesterday's lesson. So it's these questions that you had a go at yesterday. And don't worry if you found them difficult because they are all challenge questions. I'm going to go through each of these one by one and then I'd like you to make sure that you've got a correct full version of each of these questions in your notes. Okay, so question one, the first thing I'm going to do is draw a diagram so I can see exactly what's going on here. So it's a rectangular field and it says... It's 15 metres longer than it is wide. So let's just quickly draw a rectangle. I'm drawing this in pen so you can see it. I'm hoping you've drawn it in pencil, but I'm not gonna get too worried about that. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to get let the width be X because then I can let the length be X plus 15. So I'm gonna say here, let the width be X. So this is gonna be X. And then my field is 15 metres longer than it's wide, so my length is going to be the width, x plus 15. It then tells us as well that the area of this field is 800 metres squared. So I'm going to put my area there. And so this is definitely a multi-step question. They're not asking us to find anything in between. They're just going straight to work out the length of the field. OK, so we're going to have a look at this. We're going to set up a quadratic equation and then we're going to use the quadratic formula to solve this equation. So let's have a think about this. Area of a rectangle is base times height. So the area is 800. The base is x plus 15. And the height, I'm going to multiply all of that by x. So let's expand this bracket. It's the whole of the x plus 15 times x. So 800 is going to be x squared plus 15x. I've now got a quadratic equation here that I need to deal with. And don't forget, when we're solving a quadratic, we always want to get zero on one side. I'm gonna get zero on this side because that keeps my x squared positive. So zero is equal to, and how am I gonna do that? I'm gonna take 800 off. So zero is equal to x squared plus 15x minus 800. Now we could try doing a little bit of product sum here, but the product here is 1 times 800, sorry, 1 times minus 800, minus 800, and the sum is 15. So there's no two numbers that are going to multiply to give me minus 800 that are then going to add to give me 15. So we're going to look at quadratic formula here. And I know as well in this question, a big hint in this question that it's not going to factorise is it says give your answers correct to one decimal place. So if it was going to be nice um, factorization question, we'd get our exact answers, you know, x equals 3 and x equals 0 0.4 or x equals 2 and x equals a quarter, you know, those sorts of answers. Here, that's not going to happen because we're asked to round our answer to one decimal place. So we're expecting a decimal answer. OK, let's use quadratic formula. So quadratic formula, I need to know my values of a. Well, a is the coefficient of x squared. So the number of x squared here is 1. B is the coefficient of x. So here it's positive 15. And C is the number term on its own. Be careful with this negative. We've got to have the minus in there as well. So C is negative 800. And now we're going to use our quadratic formula. So x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Let's substitute in our values, being careful with any negatives. So b is, uh, sorry, minus b minus 15 plus or minus b squared, so 15 squared minus 4 times a times c. I've got to be careful with that negative in there. All over 2 times a. A is 1 here. I'm just going to move this sheet of paper up a little bit. So that's going to give me minus 15 plus or minus. I'm just going to sort this bracket out on my calculator. So 15 squared minus 4 times 1 times minus 800. So that's 3, 4, 2, 5. All over 2. So my two answers here are going to be minus 15 plus root 3425 over 2 for x, or minus 15 minus root 3425 all over 2. So let me sort that out again on my calculator. So negative 15 plus the square root of 3425 all over 2. So that side is going to give me 21 0.7617, etc. 
on this side. I'm just going to go back into my calculation here, delete that positive, make it a negative. That's going to give me negative 36.76, etc. Now, this answer is no good to me in this context of the question. If the question was just solve this quadratic, then both of these answers are okay. But this question is in the context of the area of a rectangle. So here, x is a length and x plus 15 is a length. So both of these values must be positive. And this is definitely going to give me a negative length there. So that's impossible. That's a contradiction. We can't have that answer. This is our answer for x. Let's just make sure we've answered the question that's been asked. And I can see that I haven't actually, because it says work out the length of the field. I've just worked out the width. So my length of my field, I need to finish off. So my length is equal to x plus 15. So it's this, 21.7617 plus 15. So that's going to give me 36.7617. The question says give my answer to one decimal place. So my length here is 36.8 metres to one decimal place. And there's my answer. And this, you know, these are all past GCSE questions. This question was worth four marks, which is actually quite, a, you know, it's not bad for a GCSE question. It's going to be towards the end of the paper. So it's, this question was worth four marks. We had to set up the step, steps ourselves. But once you've got your quadratic, it's just a standard quadratic formula question, but it's all about setting the question up and making sure you've answered the question that's asked. Okay, so that's question one done. Let's have a look at question two. I'm just going to move this up. I'm going to do two questions at a time here in two different videos so that you can have a look through and pause and copy these out and then take a look at the second video for the second questions. Okay, let me just stick that question down. So here we've got a right angle triangle and we're asked, so this is splitting this up into two. They could have just said this, find X, and it would have been a big multi-step question. This question is actually worth six marks in total. So they could have just said this and it would have been a big six marker towards the end of a GCSE paper, but they've actually split this one up and give us a bit of a hint. So maybe this is going to come a little bit sooner in the paper, maybe just after midway or something like that, because they're telling us what to do. So show this equation is true. If you couldn't do this in the exam, then you can still do this because you can use what they've given us. So don't give up on questions in the exam. You know, you could always do part B here and get half the marks of this question. This is worth three and three. You can always do this by using formula on here, even if you couldn't get this in part A. Let's have a look at part A, though. It's a right angle triangle. We've got three lengths and we're asked to show an equation is true and then to find X. Well, I've got a right angle triangle. I don't know the area or anything like that. But if I know three lengths, I can definitely use Pythagoras' theorem here. So let's have a look at using Pythagoras' theorem. And Pythagoras' theorem says hypotenuse squared is equal to side squared plus side squared. And we've seen this sort of question before, haven't we? This comes up quite a lot. We've seen this a little bit when we've been doing um, solving quadratic equations previously. So hypotenuse, this is my hypotenuse. So that expression squared is equal to these other two expressions squared and added together. Now we've got to remember here, we've got to do quite a bit of FOIL rule. This doesn't mean 2x squared plus 1 squared. It means 2x plus 1 all squared. So it's these brackets written out here. And you might want to do this separately and then put it all together. I'm just going to do it all within my working so I can keep it all together here. But if you wanted to do three separate bits of FOIL rule as you're working out and then put it all together at the end, that's absolutely fine. So let me just write these out and then sorting out a bit of FOIL rule, 4x squared plus 2x plus 2x plus 1, x squared plus 5x plus 5x plus 25. And then from this one, x squared minus 2x minus 2x minus times minus is a plus 4. And then we've got to collect our like terms here. I'm going to collect these together just as expressions on either side and then I'll bring it all over to one side and I'm hoping that I'm going to end up with this. So let's just sort this left hand side out, collect those x's in the middle and then here if I'm collecting my x squared, 2x squared, 5, 10 and then take off this 4, so 6x in the middle, 25 and another 4, 29. 
And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to collect everything on this side to keep my x squareds positive. So I'm going to subtract my 2x squared. I'm going to subtract my 6x. And I'm going to subtract my 29. So that's going to give me here 2x squared minus 2x minus 28 is equal to zero. And let's just have, so I've got a quadratic equation here, but let's just check what I want. I don't want the two in this, I want x squared. So let's divide by two here. I'm gonna divide everything by two. So two x squared divided by two is x squared. Minus two x divided by two is minus x. Minus 28 divided by two is minus 14. And zero divided by two is zero. So there's my quadratic and I've answered that part A of the question. And now part B of the question says find x. And as I say, even if I couldn't have done part A, they've given me a quadratic to solve for this. So I could still get half the marks for doing this. I've got my quadratic. Let's have a look at this. I could have a look at trying to see where the product somewhere. So product is negative 14. So there we've got 14 and 1 as our factors or 2 and 7. But neither of them would give me a sum of minus 1. So Product sum, factorisation doesn't work. It's going to be quadratic formula. So let's do quadratic formula here. A is equal to the coefficient of x squared, the number of x squared, which is 1. B is equal to the coefficient of x, negative 1 here, so be careful with that. C is equal to negative 14. Let's write our quadratic formula down. And then let's substitute in. So minus B plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all over 2a. Substitute in what we know. Be careful with this negative. So minus b, so minus, minus 1. So I'm going to put that in a bracket to remind myself to do minus, minus, which is a plus. And then plus or minus. Again, here I'm putting my b in a bracket to make sure I'm squaring the whole of the negative 1. Minus 4 times 1 times minus 14, all over 2 times 1. So minus times minus is a plus, so positive 1 plus or minus, minus 1 times minus 1 is positive 1 again, so minus 1 squared is 1, and then minus 4 times, <coughs> sorry, minus 4 times minus 14 here, um, I'm just going to double check that on here so I don't make any mistakes, all divided by 2, so 1 plus or minus root 57 over 2, so I've got my two answers or my two possible answers. 1 plus root 57 over 2, or 1 minus root 57 over 2. Let's just sort them out as decimals. So 1 plus root 57 all over 2. So that answer on that side, 4.2749, or if I put my negative in there instead, so 1 minus root 57 over 2, that's going to be negative 3.274. And now let's just check whether I can have both of these answers or if only one of them is relevant to this question. So here we are. And if I look at this, this answer is going to be no use to me because, for example, this side here, x minus 2, that would give me minus 5 point something. So this answer would be okay, wouldn't it? Adding 5 to this would make a positive, so that could, could work. But this one doesn't work, and this one doesn't work. They would give us negative lengths again here. So this answer is no use to me. It's a contradiction in the context of this question. So this is our value for x. It doesn't tell me what rounding to do. So what I'm doing here is giving a longer answer so they can see I've worked out a fuller answer. And then I'm just going to round this to one decimal place, like that last question. And this is centimetres. So there's the first two questions done. What I'd like you to do, if you've had a go over them yesterday, then go through and mark them and correct anything you've had got wrong. If you were a little bit stuck on these, then don't worry, but make sure you've got these answers copied out as examples of application questions in your notes. So watch this video first, and then I'm going to record the solutions to the next two questions in the next video.